Uh, it's a real pleasure for me to introduce uh, Paul Akers. He is the founder and the president of FastCap, a manufacturer of woodworking products and tools for professional cabinet makers and woodworkers. Uh, Paul has grown his business uh, from out of his garage to distribution in over 40 countries. He's the author of three books, including Two Second Lean, and he has a really unique approach. He focuses on keeping lean simple. Uh, his challenge to all of his employees is to improve their work by two seconds every single day. His acolytes are rabid, his employees are incredibly passionate, and his results are fantastic. So in keeping with the spirit of Paul's two-second lean philosophy, I could go on and on, but rather than blather about it, I'm going to make my own two-second improvement. I'm cutting myself short and uh, break because waste value. Paul Akers. Great job. Well, thank you so much. Man, that was a great introduction. I love it. Very pithy. So good morning, everyone. All right, one more time. Good morning, everyone. All right, there we go. So today's talk is called Lean is Simple, but there was one problem. You know that guy on the screen? That was not me, was it? Does it look like me? That was the old Paul, right? This is the new Paul. We're going to talk about that a little bit as well. So the question is, could lean be simple? Well, step into my world, and in 45 minutes, you be the judge. So let's get started. First of all, I can't teach you anything. Nothing. You may think, well, this guy's going to come here and teach me all this cool stuff about two-second lean. Nada. What I can do, though, is I can show you what we're doing. And that's all I can do. So let me explain the difference. So I have an amazing sensei and mentor in Japan. His name is Mr. Yoshino. This is a picture of him right here. And I was sitting in his office, and I asked Mr. Yoshino, how did you develop the program to train the Numi workers that John talked about yesterday in Japan? Now remember, these were tough people. And John didn't tell you, they were actually making bongs out of mufflers. I mean, they did everything in this factory. And so Yoshino-san, this young engineer, was tasked with training these Americans 30 years ago. And I said, Yoshino, Mr. Yoshino, how did you do that? And he said, Paul-san, very simple. I realized, what could I, as a young Japanese engineer, teach these Americans? I can't teach them anything. They don't want to be taught. But what I can do is I can show them what we're doing. And if they want to follow along, that's great. And this is what happened. So this is Mr. Yoshino. You see a picture of him up there. There's John Shook right there. And those are the original workers that came over to Japan. And John told that story yesterday. And this is what happened. Could Toyota take one of the worst factories on Earth and make it into one of the best using the exact same workers? Toyota's first step was to send workers like Madrid to the car maker's Japanese factories. There, Madrid saw a worker misthread a bolt. And then, something totally unexpected happened. The worker reached up to pull a rope hanging overhead, and boom! Boom, they stopped the line. They stopped the line to repair it. Gee, that makes sense. Fix it now. That impressed me, that they want to build a quality car. One bolt. <laughs> One bolt changed my attitude. That was Toyota's philosophy, that workers should be empowered to stop an assembly line or invent new tools or do whatever else they feel like they need to do in order to get things done. The idea is that if you give workers the authority to take control, you'll not only unlock innovation, but motivation. After Toyota implemented lean management in Fremont, within just two years, the worst auto plant in the world had become one of the best. If you want your team to take more ownership of their work, then give them more power. Put the responsibility for solving a problem with the person who's closest to that problem, regardless of what their title is, and then step back and watch the productivity skyrocket. Don't you love it? So it's your decision. And the reason why I like this, what Yoshino-san told me that day, is it takes all the pressure off of me. 
If you want to learn today, it's up to you. I'm going to do my best to teach as much as I can, but really it's all up to you. But if you don't want to learn, that's no problem. Don't worry, you don't have to do it. But if you're open to new ideas, this morning might intrigue you. So the question is, can you build a lean culture? Is it difficult to build a lean culture? Many people have tried and they struggle and they work at it and they go, it's so difficult that people won't cooperate. I'm going round and round in circles. It's crazy what I have to go through. I totally get it. I totally get it. I went through the same problem for the first five years when I did it as well. I was worse than this guy on the wheel, right? I pulled all my hair out. It was like nuts what I went through. So the talk goal, if I have one goal in 45 minutes, and this is it, for you to see waste like you've never seen it before. When you see waste, when, you, when I show you the waste I'm going to show you in the videos and the examples I'm going to give you, it should like electrify you. You say, oh my gosh, I see it. I see what this guy's talking about. It's everywhere. And it becomes a great big game to get rid of it. And here's my favorite game of all. You ready? So this is an airline ticket that I received from Delta Airlines. And I looked at that, and I'm a DNC student. I struggle with school. I'm dyslexic. I got a big nose. I got big feet. I got every problem in the world, right? But I cannot read this ticket, and I have no clue what gate I'm supposed to be at. And I'm frustrated, and I see waste. I take out my iPhone, put it on my knee like this, and take a picture and send it to my graphic designer. Okay, my graphic design team, 25-year-old, a 25-year-old. Now we do tens of millions of dollars of business. We don't do billions of dollars of business like Delta Airlines, but we're a decent sized company. We only have a 25-year-old. He says, bring it on. I'll design a lean airline ticket. 15 minutes later, this is what he gets. What do you think of this? Now look how simple that is. Thank you. Thank Graham. Think about what's going on there. You have great visual control. You have it sequenced in exactly the order you need it in. Everything's standardized. It's simple. Anybody can read A, a three-year-old can figure out what gate to get to, right? But it's just, what, what was Delta Airlines thinking? I mean, like, this is crazy. This is a billion-dollar organization. I think it's the biggest airline in the world. I don't get it. Now, Toyota came to our plant, and Toyota saw this ticket, and they go, Paul, that's brilliant. But... It can be improved. And I said, what? And they said, put an arrow showing the direction of flight. I'm going, genius. Put the arrival time, genius. Put the date, genius. I didn't get defensive when Toyota came to my plant and said, oh, it can be improved. It was my idea. I don't care whose idea it is. I just care that we make it better, that we improve the quality. And this is the spirit of lean. I was so happy. We immediately made the change and the new ticket was put on my PowerPoint 15 minutes after Toyota was there. That's the way we do everything. We don't do batch work. We don't queue things up on to-do lists. We have developed processes to do everything right now. And the minute we can't do it right now, we say, oh, how do we fix that? So why can we do this? Because we can see waste. That's it. We see waste in everything. We teach the eight waste to all of our employees every morning. One of our employees recites the eight ways. And of course, we have to do it fun. We have to make it easy. So we did it fast food style. So here you go. So we have three customers sitting there to order, right? But we've made 10 hamburgers. You must understand that all waste comes from one thing, overproduction. The reason why Toyota came up with Just In Time was because they were broke. They had tons of inventory. The bank was going to foreclose on them. They had to find a way to get rid of the inventory to free up cash or they were going to lose everything. So everything comes from overproduction. So please, for the love of God, don't memorize the eight ways with Tim Wood or any acronym. Because if you don't understand how waste really works, it will never be meaningful to you. For the first five years, I had no clue what the eight ways were at my company. My people knew no clue. And then I finally figured out it was critical to understanding what Lean was all about. So here we go. We have three customers, we make 10 hamburgers. First one, overproduction. Then we transport them. Then we put them excess inventory, put them in a warming oven. We build a big warming oven with lights. We create all this infrastructure that is absolutely not necessary. Then the customer says, I don't want them with pickles. We have to pull the pickles off. Guess what that is? That's a defect. Then we have to overprocess it. Then we have to waste the motion to do that. The meanwhile, the customer's waiting and we've wasted the employee potential because we're making them doing stupid work 
overproducing instead of figuring out how to take the process and deliver it just in time. That's how we remember the eight ways. Every morning, one of our employees recites the eight ways. Every one of our people know it cold. There are no acronyms. There's not a single slogan in our building. There's not a single poster anywhere in our facility. Anywhere. There's no awards. There's nothing. It's here. People know this stuff because we live and breathe it every day. So what did the airlines do? They overproduced. There's overproduction. Then they transported me all over the airport. And the next thing you know, I got inventory. I'm stacked up because I missed my flight. And now, guess what? That's a defect. And the next thing you know, I got a heart attack. Now they're reviving me another defect. And then overprocessing, I'm rebooking my flight. And what's next? Overprocessing big reader board information to, to get people to find out where they need to go. And all they have to do is put the information clearly on a ticket. Could you imagine? How simple is this? Then we have excess motion, people standing in line, queuing up. And then we have waiting because I missed my flight. And of course, the last one of all, wasted employee potential, because we have all of our people doing all the stupid work instead of improving processes. It's really so simple when you really stop to think about it. And you know what? It's not rocket science. It's a freaking airline ticket. It's so simple. And this freaking airline ticket is in your company everywhere produced by the hundreds in everything you do. Whether it be in documents or processes, you have lots of clunky, difficult things that you're dealing with that are hard to negotiate through. So, I've written a few books, and my first book was Two Second Lean. And really what it is is a treatise on my mistakes. All the mistakes I made trying to build this lean culture. I was that hamster on the wheel. My second book was about my health. I determined that the most important customer in the world, I had missed this, I don't know how I had missed it for 54 years, was my body, the gift of life that has been given me to take care of and be responsible for. I applied lean principles to it, and this is the result. You saw what I used to look like. All the mistakes I made. I'm constantly Han saying and looking back, what was I doing? Why did I do that? How could I improve it? My next book, Lean Travel, I've been to 70 countries. I've been around the world eight times just in the last 16 months. A lot of clunky processes in travel. How could we improve that? I wrote a book about it. My next book, one of my favorite books of all time, is Banishing Sloppiness. I spent a lot of time in Japan. And this is me reflecting back on just how incredibly sloppy I am compared to the Japanese, who are so precise, so enthralled with quality, so obsessed with getting it right. And then I look at me, I go, oh, it's shameful. Banishing sloppiness and falling in love with precision. Do you see the theme? I'm always looking at my mistakes. And then last but not least, lean life. Hopefully someday this will come out, it's almost done. It's not about exercising this muscle. It's exercising this muscle. It's applying these fabulous lean principles to everything we do in life. Our lives should be amazing. Not average. Every part of your life should be spectacular because it is improving every day. Your health, the way you travel, the way you manage your health, the way you manage your relationships, the way you manage your business. Hey, it's easy to be ambitious and build a great company. I did it. But can you manage your health well? Can you manage your marriage well? Can you manage your house well? Can you manage your kids well? Well, guess what? The tools have been given to us. Continuous improvement. Small improvements every day. So where are we going? I'm going to tell you about my lean journey. We're going to learn to see waste. We're going to look at uh, some new ideas. And we're going to marvel at some amazing cultures. So who am I? I'm not a consultant, although I consult with some very big companies. I'm not a public speaker, although I speak in front of thousands of people all over the world. But I am a manufacturer. I love to work with my hands. And I'm a lean maniac 24-7. I think about lean in everything I do. I know it might drive some of you crazy, but that's just who I am. And most importantly, my hands are dirty. Let me explain. I have a good friend named Noriko, who is a translator for Shigeo Shingo. And one day, Shigeo Shingo told her a story, and she conveyed that to me. And I sat there and thought, wow, that's amazing. 
Shigeo said to Noriko, there are four kinds of engineers. The first engineer is a white glove engineer, never gets his hands dirty. The second engineer is a catalog engineer. Anytime they want to solve a problem, they open a catalog, hey, we'll buy that, done. The next one is a knit engineer, that's the Russian word for no. Tried it before it won't work, no chance, right? And the last one is one that washes their hands 10 times a day. And that is who I am. I am constantly getting my hands dirty. I do lean. I don't talk about it. I don't want a spreadsheet. I don't want to be in a glass office. I don't want to analyze the information. I want to be on the Gemba. Let me show you what that looks like. Every time I go to Japan, this is where I am. The bottom line is if you want to learn lean, you got to go to the shop floor. You got to get your hands dirty. When I go to Japan, I actually work in the factories. I actually do the work so I understand how the Japanese think about the way they improve every process. And when I worked at this factory, they make over 100 million parts a year with only 35 defects getting to Toyota. I made 20 mistakes in the first hour. They watched me like a hawk, but they trained me so well. They allowed me to do everything. It was absolutely amazing. Getting my hands dirty, learning how to do the work with the workers on the shop floor. It is amazing how much you see and learn when you do. From the most simple things, stacking, moving boxes around, picking their Kanban, finding all the cool little improvements they've made with little ramps that tip the boxes up at the correct angle for the operator, eating lunch with the people on the shop floor, maintaining their spot welding tips, going to their morning meetings, changing molds out that weigh thousands of pounds in under five minutes. I got to do everything because I only want to be one place, getting my hands dirty on the shop floor. Go to the Gemba. That's where it all happens. That's where the real learning takes place. So 17 years of lean thinking. So this is me back in about 2000, hiding back there in the back, because when I first learned about this lean thing, I wasn't sure about it. So I go to Japan, I'm kind of hiding in the back, and I don't really want to do this thing. Are these people freaks or weirdos? I don't, I don't know what it was. So here's, what, here's my story complete. In 1997, I started my company. Three years later, we won product, or we won the business of the year. Pretty lofty thing. I don't have an MBA. I didn't go to MIT. They actually put a 30-mile no-fly zone around MIT. They don't want people like me even close to it, right? So, you know, I just make everything so simple. I go, well, stay away. Anyways, so, but I did win business of the year, and we're a very successful company. The most common question that people ask me is, when are you going to go public, and can we invest in your company? So um, I said, wow, that's pretty good, you know, not bad. And what was our product? The first one was the simplest thing in the world, a peel and stick cover cap to cover screw holes. Nobody had ever invented that. And then a laser jam. Today we have like 900 products in 40 countries and 3,000 distributors around the world. We have, ready for this? We have no sales department. We have no marketing department. None. Our factory floor is our sales department. The phone just rings. We want to carry your product all over the world, all day long. Da, 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 da. New customers all the time. No sales department. Operational excellence is our sales tool. Could you imagine that? How about that for lean? Pretty incredible, right? So we're doing pretty good here. And if you looked at our factory before uh, we learned from Toyota, we looked pretty good, man. It was clean. It was organized. Everything was buttoned down. I'm the biggest OCD person in the whole world. I'm like, over the top, I could, lean, I could be the president of the OCD club, right? So, uh, and you know, I should have been pretty good because Bob Taylor is a personal close friend of mine. San Diego, click, click, click. Anybody putting this together? Uh, Taylor Guitars, the finest guitars in the world. I made the first 2,000 guitars that came out of Taylor Guitars with Bob. Uh, he was my mentor when I was 17 to 19. I worked for him. He taught me everything I know about manufacturing. He is unbelievable, the smartest guy I've ever met in my life. And I should have known what I was doing. I was an industrial arts teacher. I built furniture. I built beautiful homes. I restored beautiful homes in Pasadena. Hey, I had a good pedigree. I kind of knew what I was doing. This is my home. I built my home. I did all the landscaping in it. I built every piece of furniture in it, all the guitars in it, everything. The cabinets, the kitchen cabinets, everything. I knew how to manufacture. I knew how to put two things together. I knew more than how to screw in a bolt, believe me, right? So I knew what I was doing, or at least I thought I did. And I was very organized. You came to my factory, everything was buttoned down, faced off, clean, organized, painted floors, just like a hanger. It was unbelievable. 
But the problem is lean is not about being organized because you can organize waste. And I was the master of it. You see, waste defined by the number one is overproduction. And we had overproduced all kinds of things. Our customers ordered 100 caps, but I produced 10,000 caps. Why did I do that? Because I was ignorant. So I hired a couple kids to come in and help me learn about the Toyota production system. And when they walked around my facility, as good as it was, business of the year, the bank president had actually been there a week before and said, it's the best company he's ever dealt with. He said he'd loan me any amount of money he wanted. I was applying for a quarter million dollar line of credit. They don't give quarter million line of credits to, to people like me. You know, I had no business background, but he said, I'd loan you any amount of money you want. That's what he said a week before. And then these guys come in from Japan and say, I'm clueless. I'm going, what? I don't know what I'm doing. And I said, what do I need to do? And they said, you need to learn TPS, lean manufacturing, or Kaizen. Now that was a problem because those were Greek words to me and I'm Greek and I didn't understand a word of what they were saying. It was crazy. So I thought they would come in and tweak my company. I already had a good company. I was already making lots of money. Everything was going well. I had a problem managing inventory a little bit, but I thought they'd just tweak it, but they didn't tweak it. They transformed the whole thing. They turned everything into U-shaped cells. We started making everything one at a time. They took processes that were taking 45 minutes and took it to seven minutes in one week. Then they took another die change that we're doing that was taking us 45 minutes to five minutes in one week. All of a sudden, we didn't have to produce all that stuff. We could turn on the machine, run what the customer wanted, turn off the machine. <gasps> Imagine that. I was clueless. You know what? The next step was on my way to Japan. I had to figure out what the heck was going on here. So I went to Japan and I couldn't believe what I was seeing. Earth to Japan. These people were all standing up on very simple desks. The president was in the same room as everybody else. Everybody was open communication. It was incredible. I went to factories that were doing metal fabrication that were absolutely immaculate. A one piece flow. Inventory was arriving every day as they needed it. It looked like Disneyland. Skylights. It was beautiful. This factory had so much time. Once a week they went around the entire neighborhood and clean the neighborhood. It was unbelievable. I saw mold dye changes that blew me away. I saw mold changes like this one that would take eight hours to do. I saw four people change thousand pound molds in seven minutes with the president of the company watching. No pressure, no problem. They do this all day long. They do a hundred of these a day in this factory. They're changing molds all the time. Everything just in time. And they look at, you know, the Japanese are so funny. Boy, that's just normal. That's just the way we do it, normal. I can't find my way to the bathroom in five minutes. And they're changing four molds in seven minutes. It's unbelievable what they do. Perfect parts. End perfect part, start perfect part. Incredible. And then, oh boy, if you really want to be intrigued, I love bathrooms. If some of you know about me, I love bathrooms. Go to a Japanese bathroom. It's unbelievable. Baby chair inside in the bathroom. And you are right here right now, and then on the left side and the right side, and then these blue ones are vacant, and then the red one is used. So come on over here. You can see how many seats are left, and this is a Japanese style of. Bathroom. And then what it shows you here also the lights. If it's red, it's used, and, and then the blue is vacant. Come over here. Even this this room has a baby chair in here. This is a baby chair right here. And if you have a stick to walk, you can just stick in here. Or even umbrella, you can just stick in here. When you sit down, you gotta take out this tissue, bathroom tissue, and then this is the spray for the cleaner. And then you kind of wipe here, and then you do your stuff, and then you kind of push this button. And that's all it. And this is even the toilet for your baby to sit down. Amazing, this had a rest side stop. Bidet toilet seats, everything's clean. I mean, it's like crazy, their standards are ridiculous. I could not believe what I was seeing. Everywhere I went, I saw things that just astounded me. I thought I was good, I was a joke. This is Toto, they build casts, they do castings. It's unbelievable, Lexus with a yellow uh, ventilation pipe to show the neighborhood, as well as the workers, whether or not they're polluting anything. It just blew me away. Everything was on wheels, everything was flexible. They love flexibility. The president of Toto, OPM, zero mistakes, zero downtime, zero defect, zero, not six sigma, zero. It's crazy. 
The standards were insane, but then everything changed for me when I walked into Hawks. When I got there, I was in a suit, and I got off the bus, and the president of the company got me down on my hands and knees. And he said, start cleaning the floor, Paul Sun. And I was pissed. I was like, why am I doing this? This is the craziest thing I've ever done. We have floor cleaners do this. It's stupid. Why are we doing this? Paul Sun, you miss, you're missing lesson. Lesson is humility. Lesson is working with people. Oh, okay. I see. And he said, Paul Sun, every morning you come in, you sweep, you sort, you standardize, you meet with your people, you do little exercises, you make small improvements, then you go to work. I go, oh, I think I get what you're saying. So simple. I said, how come you don't do 5S? He says, we don't do 5S because the sustaining and the self-discipline is automatic. We just, we just leaned out the 5Sing, it's 3Sing. We sort, sweep, we standardize every day. I go, wow, this is, this is in my vernacular. I mean, I like things simple. I can't remember five things, three things, maybe. Five things, uh, maybe not, right? And so I said, what happens? when Nissan comes here? What happens when Ford comes here? Because a lot of big companies were going to Hawks. What happens? And he goes, oh, Paul Sun, I have master's degree, PhD. We're very smart people. Smart people can't believe it could be this simple. You 3S your facility. You do little exercises. You work with your people. You get on the Gemba. You solve problems. Oh, I go, I can get behind this. Maybe I can do this. So when you look at my office, this is my office, I have no office. There is no sign anywhere in our company that says Paul Aker's president. I just sit at a pipe, I stand at a pipe desk with everyone else. There are four of us in a quad, just like you saw in Japan. We made all the desks, everything's made out of plywood. There is nothing fancy in our entire facility. It's crazy. I have one drawer, you open the drawer, that's what I have in there. It's all set in Kaizen foam. My desktop on my computer, constantly being 3S. Is this what yours looks like? I know a lot of it does because I go around the world and I see it all the time. So I said, I get it. All lean is, is learning to see waste and eliminating that waste by fixing what bugs you. I can do this. This makes total sense. Learning the eight wastes, they were critical. So what is Two Second Lean? I took out my iPhone. I made a quick little recording for 60 seconds. I sent it to a company called Fiverr. And for five bucks, these lean entrepreneurs produced this amazing video to tell you really all Two Second Lean is. What is Two Second Lean? It is simple. I took a world-class business concept practiced by the top companies in the world, Toyota, Harley-Davidson, Porsche, and made it fun and easy so anyone could tap into the power of daily continuous improvement. There are three easy steps to become a powerful lean thinker. First, learn the eight ways. Overproduction, transportation, inventory, defects, overprocessing, motion, waiting, wasted human potential. Then you will see these different wastes everywhere and it will drive you crazy. Second, you will be compelled to eliminate the waste you now see and make improvements every day that removes the waste in your life. Make it the first thing you do every day. Small, consistent, tiny, two second improvements all hooked together day after day adds up to mountains of more free time, friend time, and play time. You see, there's nothing cool about being wasteful, and there is everything cool about becoming a lean thinker. Third, pull out your smartphone and shoot a quick video to show your improvements to your friends, family, and coworkers. That's it. Prepare to experience the power of becoming a lean thinker. Do you remember that opening video when they say, prepare for productivity to blast off? Everyone pull out your phone. Pull out your phone, hold it up. Hold it up right now. Come on, everyone, hold up your phone. This is it. This is your rocket ship. Learn how to use this thing. This is the secret weapon. This is the way our generation, the millennials, not my generation, but the new generation communicates. There are millions of hours of video uploaded to YouTube every day. 
The best teachers in the world are on YouTube. You want to learn brain surgery? You go to YouTube. You want to learn how to fix your water heater? You go to YouTube. You want to learn how to put in a sprinkler system? You go to YouTube. This is the most powerful, accelerant, and learning tool you could ever imagine. So I realized I had a big video department. I had a $10,000 camera. I threw it all out. This is it. And you don't hold the phone like this when you do a video. Always like this, okay? Just show before the problem and after. 60 seconds is beautiful. Two minutes, okay. Three, four minutes, you're going a little bit too long. That's it. Then start sharing those ideas with everyone. Gasoline. It was unbelievable what happened. Fiverr. Interesting. Freelance services for lean entrepreneurs. Isn't that interesting? Five bucks made that video. So I came back from Japan. I realized it was all about seeing waste. I started seeing waste everywhere, and I made the corniest video in the world called The Lean Burrito. It's been seen by hundreds of thousands of people around the world, been translated into all different languages. And this is it, and I don't look anything like that because I don't eat burritos anymore, but here you go. In an attempt to always find waste, this is my burrito that I'm eating. Now they asked me when I bought it if I wanted sour cream and hot sauce, and I said yes. So instead of putting it in the burrito, they gave it to me in a separate container. I have an idea. Next time, put the sour cream and the hot sauce in the burrito. Okay, I just finished my burrito, and this is all the waste. We have the aluminum foil that's going to be thrown out, the paper that's going to be thrown out, the container from the salsa and the sour cream. We have two napkins, one I didn't use, and a whole little box here with a plastic fork and a plastic knife, all going to be put in the landfill for one burrito. All I really needed was the aluminum foil to wrap it in, and that was it. Sour cream, everything could have been inside, and one napkin, I would have made less of a mess, and I would have been perfect. Look at all the waste. Check out this waste. We did a spreadsheet. Four cents for the carton. The knife and fork, six cents. Everything added up to 31 cents of waste per burrito. 30 burritos a day, $9.30 times seven days a week, 52 weeks, $3,385 per store. If you take 31 cents a burrito times 10 million burritos a day in the U.S. alone, that's $3.1 million in the landfill. That's total waste. Okay, I'm back at the local coffee shop, curb shops, and we're going to get ourselves a lean burrito. Watch how this is done. Hi, Gina. How are you? Good. How are you? Can I get a lean burrito? Sure. I want a burrito with sour cream, hot sauce inside, aluminum foil, and nothing else in one napkin. That sounds good. Okay. okay. Thanks, Gina. Here it comes, the lean burrito. What do we got? Aluminum foil, one napkin. Wow, that's amazing. Look at all the waste we eliminated. With the sour cream and everything inside. Isn't this yummy? Look at this thing. All ready to go, just the way I wanted it, just what the customer wanted, and no more and no less. So I made this video and my life started improving because all the waste that was driving me crazy was disappearing. And as I shared that with everyone, I go, this is unbelievable. I love lean. Lean is like the coolest thing in the world. Everywhere I went, I was hearing stories from people who were practicing these simple principles and, I was, and their lives were being changed. This is one Antonio. I just spoke in Chicago. He walked up to me just before I went on stage and told me this story. I pulled out my iPhone and shot it. Antonio, <laughs> how long have you been doing lean? Um, it's been, our company started about two years ago, yeah. but uh, I personally been doing lean for about eight months or so. Yeah. Um, I absolutely hated lean at first. No. Yes, I. Hated I've heard it. this before. Yeah, I, I did not like it. Uh, I just saw it as some uh, really weird business tool yeah. to give more productivity out of me for the same or less pay. Oh yeah. And, uh, oh, so you saw all the, the potential underlying things what your boss was trying to do when really it was not about that at all. No, actually uh, the way it worked out is uh, I started imp uh, implementing Lean First in my home Yeah. and when I saw the benefits in my own house like my bathroom and just getting up and making things easier. You're awesome. I just started using it at work. I'm like well, why wouldn't I do this at work if it's going to make eight hours a lot easier for me so it just kind of progressively got better and now I love it I even love 3 sing. it's great <laughs> I love it too yeah it's awesome he saw the benefits 
It's really amazing because lean should give you tremendous benefits in all areas of your life. You know, San Antonio did it at home, not just at work, and he was their biggest naysayer, and now he's their lean champion. When you feel the benefits, this is it. I get letters from people nonstop, my emails, boxers. Since I saw your video, I started to implement lean in my daily work as a technical writer at a financial software company. Oh no, it's only for manufacturing. It doesn't work for there. And the results have been fantastic by making and sharing small and large improvements. We've saved hundreds, if not thousands of hours yearly and have taken our game to a whole new level. Those improvements even got me invited as a speaker to a telecom conference. Imagine that. Another one. I got this one the other day, a text message. Uncle Paul, baby Kai Zan. They named their baby Kai Zan. Kai Zan Mosier. Amazing, right? Transformation. I am your number one fan in the universe. I want to be the president of Paul Akers Fan Club. My husband, Mark, has been transformed by this two second lean thing. And I'm the one who benefits. So please know what you do makes a difference and it's fun. So after your wife, I love her too. I'm your number one fan. This one, a humble lean consultant. I realize that I've been doing it all wrong. I've concentrated on teaching the tools and methods and failed to adequately address the culture. Now I'm on fire and I'm going to address the people issue. What did George say? A people-centric organization. First and foremost, this one I just got last week blew me away. This company, Lovano, makes uh, hide beds for Disney, thousands of them, amazing company, totally dysfunctional. They adopted the two-second lean model, completely transformed the company. They said they could barely keep a, keep, a, keep a person on staff for a couple weeks. Now they have this amazing culture. Alexi sent me this audio message, and I put a little video clip behind it because I visited them uh, just about two months ago. Here you go. I asked him back, I was like, Ron, what improvements have you been making? He's like, oh, I don't have time to make improvements. It just, I'm trying to knock out these products. And I looked at him, I was like, dude, that's exactly how I started. I'm like, I had no time to do anything. And now it takes me almost half the time to build the same product. I'm like, now I have time to even make more changes because, quote unquote, I earned the right from the process, saved enough seconds, so now I have minutes and minutes, and over the course of the day, I can finish my workload faster, more efficient, feeling less exhausted, and being able to use my brain with much more clarity to increasing the, the station itself and the fluidity of the work. And after having that conversation, it just hit me in a new light. Just fix what bugs you. Like, finally, it makes sense to me. Like, in the depths of my being, it makes sense to me. Let's do it right away. Don't wait till the next day, but fix it now, and you'll see if it works or not, and then you could do the PDSA cycle over and over until you perfect the, the process or that one thing that you're trying to make better. You'll go through a lot of iterations to get the perfect thing. So just wanted to say... Uh, thank you very much. You do make a huge difference, and you've made a huge difference in my life, the way I think about life, the way I approach it. Um, work uh, is is just, I could take, I've taken something that was mundane and boring, and on a daily basis, it's like a game now, trying to find how to make things better, more efficient, more fun, more exciting, just all that. And you've made that difference in my life. Uh, we might never see each other again, uh, but I want to let you know that your life, your work has impacted my life and the quality of it. It's amazing. Transformed. But in order to really know why, you have to know the soul of lean. And in order to know the soul of lean, I have to take you to Japan. I'm going to take you to a little village outside of Nagoya where Sakichi Toyota, the founder of Toyota, lived as a young boy and a carpenter. And this is the thing that's most astounding. I wonder why is it that the Toyota production system is so powerful? Why is it that it has transformed so many companies around the world? So humbly done that. Because they, they don't brag about it at all. They're very humble about the whole thing. Well, I found out why. I went to Sakichi's home and this 12-year-old boy had a problem. His mother had a problem. She was weaving on a loom 
and she was struggling. She had to stop every time and push that shuttle back and forth. And Sakichi looked at it and said, how can I help my mother? How can I improve the quality of my mother's life? Not how can I make more money? How can I improve the quality of my mother's life? This is the soul of Lean. And this is why the Toyota production system, in my opinion, is so powerful. This is a workshop he did the improvement in, and this is the story. To understand the soul of Lean, you really need to go back to the roots. So I went to Sakichi Toyota's home, to the actual workshop where this young boy, as a carpenter, saw his mother struggling with the loom work she was doing. He said, there must be a better way. And he set out in this little tiny workshop to solve a problem that nobody else had solved at that point. And he figured out a way for the shuttle to move back and forth with the feet instead of stopping every time to do it with the hands. And the curator actually let me use the machine so I could feel what it was like for Sakichi Toyota to actually make that discovery. What an amazing thing, the soul of lean, to make work easier for other people, to improve the quality of life for other people. It's an amazing story, and there's a reason why it's so powerful. I love Lean. These are my people. These are my process engineers. They are all process engineers. Their goal is not to come in and make widgets and woodworking tools every day. Their goal is to improve the way we make woodworking tools. They are all process engineers. I'm going to take you to my company real quick. It's in Bellingham, Washington and give you a little overview. We are a worthless little company. People walk in and say, wow, it's incredible. On a scale of one to 100, Toyota's a 99, we're a three. I took my engineers to Lexus. They walked out of Lexus and they said, Paul, you know, every time you say that, everybody goes on a tour and you say that, we know you're exaggerating. We gotta be at least a 60 or a 70. He said, Paul, you have been lying. We are a negative 30. <laughs> I'll show you what we look like but we are worthless next to Toyota. But of course, they've had 50 or 60 years to do it. This is a journey, and it's a journey of small little improvements every day. Hey everyone, Paul Akers, so I'm at Fast Cab. When you walk in the front door, you can see our office. It's all stand up. We've made all the pipe desks out of fast pipe. It's very cool. And you can see we don't have any walls because that's the factory floor right there, the shipping and receiving connected right to everything we're doing. So the first stop is the showroom, which is really, really cool. And the showroom, everything's on wheels as well. And you can see all of our cool products, our best fence system, our great Kaizen foam panels here. Our conference room, which is uh, world famous because there's no chairs. And it's very lean, very efficient because we're standing up. Graphic design right here. Notice everything's on wheels. Everybody's standing up. And we have the most amazing bathroom in the whole world, which I'm gonna show you right now which is one of our claim to fame. Of course, a nice eight-step process right there on how the bathroom's cleaned and who's responsible for cleaning it. I actually cleaned the bathroom this morning. I'm the president of the company and I clean the bathroom because everybody takes responsibility for everything. Everything is flawless, clean, immaculate. We have Japanese bidet toilet seats that heat. You don't ever want to get out the toilet seat. That's the only place that people like to sit in our place. And check this out. You walk into our supply room. Look at this. Is this magic? Cleaning stations for all the different areas. Everything's Kanban. Everything's dialed in. There's not a mess anywhere in Fast Cap. There's cleaning stations for everything. And it stays that way all day long because we keep the rope tight. So this is a cool little area up here. A little place you can have coffee. You can sit down and relax if you want over here. This is our training center right here. And this is our gym up over here. And this is our dojo where we actually train people on how to do lean improvements. Okay, so now we come over to the kitchen area. Of course, no walls again. This is where we eat. Notice the table's perfectly clean. Everybody cleans up after themselves, puts the chairs in, wipes up. You know, our famous magnetic salt and pepper shakers. Everything's dialed in everywhere. Who has kitchen drawers like this? The inventory on the plates because the dishwasher does a load in two minutes. 
and of course an eight step process for cleaning the kitchen and the forks and the spoons and the knives are all very neatly arranged so they're easy and visual and this is our grateful box right here which because we want to be grateful people and that is the key to life right there and this area right off the kitchen where we eat this is where we have our morning meeting every morning where everyone meets we call it the sandbox this is where we play teach and learn this is all down production row right here and these are all our machines that are doing just in time, producing everything just in time. You can see everything's on wheels, even these gigantic racks, all of our tools, everything dialed in, everything perfect, just the way it should be. Nobody's struggling to get anything. Our nut and bolt rack, best in the world right there. And this is down in injection molding where Skyler hangs out. These are all of our colorants, all Kanban, all visually labeled, pretty amazing. All of our injection molds down there with all the spec sheets on how to run each mold and magnetically applied the part that actually the mold makes. You can see the part right there. So this is all engineering right over here. And these are all the engineers are standing up actually right here on the shop floor working with the people. These are all the products we make set into our Kaizen foam. This is called our lateral thinking board. This allows us to take products that we've made in the past and say, hey, you know what, we've done that before. How can we use that same concept? We'll go over into our wood shop. So clean, so organized. Everything's absolutely flawless and perfect. Check out this right here. Pretty cool. And then over to our miter box area. Again, all the tools, everything's dialed in. We don't struggle or work hard to do anything because everything's where it's supposed to be. Notice the safety glasses are right on every machine. Doesn't matter what machine you go to, band saws, safety glasses, all the tools on the table saw that you need, tape measures, pencils, safety glasses, earphones, push stick, everything's there. And our CNC machine, of course, all of our third hand products, everything organized on the wall. And then I almost forgot our sewing area with Natasha. This is absolutely awesome. So this is where she does all of our sewing projects. Another thing that's really cool is all of our forklifts, they can be 15 years old and they look brand new. So now, these are all production cells right here. So all these cells are where we make all of our products every morning. Everybody goes into the cells, produces everything just in time for the morning uh, production, and that's what happens there. And all of our production work is run off a Kanban card. This ensures just in time delivery and that we don't overproduce anything. And on each Kanban card, there's a QR code on the back. And this QR code is a video. It shows anybody who wants to do the build exactly what they need to do. We have an iPad for them to just scan this and watch the video and everything's done right. This is our shipping terminal right here. And you can see all of our boxes are color coded up there. You see them up there, right there. So it shows you all the different size boxes and they're color coded. And of course, this is the shipping area down here and those same color codes are down here. So if you want a gold box, you come down here, you look at the gold box and there it is, all visual. And of course, this is where all of our orders are. So these are all of our orders. Notice, hey, how about that? Everything's color coded, two hours fax to truck. And this last of all is our grocery store. This is where all of our product is kept in just in time fashion, generally anywhere between a day to a week's inventory in this line right here. So we come down this row and we pick everything. So there is a very quick tour of Fast Capture. You're willing to dedicate the time, put in the hard work and make it happen and we'll open our doors to you. And there's the front door you'll walk through. Thanks a lot. So what are the ground rules? The ground rules for lean are lean is simple and lean is fun. It's that easy. Lean is simple and lean is fun. And where are all these improvements? They're right underneath your nose. This is a typical improvement that would happen at our company. We're counting seconds. So Austin, show me a great new improvement. In Laser Jam, to start the case, we have to open it up and always have to fumble around with this. Really difficult. Four latches, a little cumbersome. Opens it up, really difficult. So check this out. Wes from the YPO gave me this great idea about how to open the hinges. Very simple, close the case really simple. Look at that, all closed, all nice and easy to go. One motion. One motion. Amazing job. Thanks, Wes. <laughs> Pretty crazy, isn't it? 
Lean is so simple. You know, I use the example of a toilet. You know, men have a problem. They go into a bathroom, they're not the cleanest fellows in the whole world, and they've created all these different crazy toilets in order to keep men from being so messy, right? They've made big ones, long ones, they've made these crazy shapes. This is supposed to solve 95% of the problems, but it turns out that a, a guy from Denmark comes up with an idea, just etch a fly into a toilet, give a man a target, and you've got it, and you're done, right? So simple, right? I don't know why in the world people haven't figured that out sooner. Lean is so simple, it's unbelievable. And all these improvements are right underneath your nose. So I want to take you to Kazakhstan. I spent a lot of time in Kazakhstan. I got a call about an email about three years ago. They said, Paul, come to Kazakhstan. I didn't know where Kazakhstan was. So just so you know, this is where Kazakhstan is. Ninth biggest landmass in the world, nine million people, uh, former Soviet uh, satellite and uh, they got their freedom about 20 years ago. And it's quite an amazing place. So I'm working with a company called the BI Group. It's the largest construction company in that country. Uh, this is Aiden, the president right here. He is one of the most amazing guys. It's about a $3 billion company, the humblest man I've ever met, the most accomplished man. He's number ninth in the world in Dakar. Uh, they build two million square feet a year of projects. They build roads, railroads, refineries, commercial buildings. It is staggering. You go around Astana, you go anywhere, in Kazakhstan, and they have sky cranes everywhere. It's just insane what these people are doing. And so they asked me to come there and speak to them about lean. So I went there and spoke to them about lean. I spoke for eight hours straight. I've never spoke for eight hours in my life, but they wanted an eight-hour conference. And by gosh, I gave them an eight-hour conference. I was exhausted. At the end, Aiden stood up and he goes, this is the most amazing thing. This powerful leader, this very accomplished man, I can't believe I've missed this. I can't believe I've missed this. What humility. I can't believe I miss this. It's so simple. He pulled out his phone. He held it up to his entire executive team, and he said, this is what we're going to do. He came up with a better idea than me. I say, post all your, your videos on YouTube. He said, no, WhatsApp. He opened up his, his phone, and he said, let's start posting our videos on WhatsApp. And they made all these incredible videos. So when I was there, this is how bad they were. They were spilling crap everywhere. It was like waste everywhere. And I'm going, what are you doing here? This is like nuts. You're wasting all this concrete. And they said, well, the, the floor is really uneven and the truck spills it. And I said, well, why don't you just pave it so it's smooth? And they go, well, we don't have the money to do that. And I said, well, that's because you're throwing all your concrete right, you know, your concrete right here to do it. So I made the president of the company get in there and shovel it with me. I'm going, you got to feel the pain of the stupidity that you're putting your people through. Your processes are so bad. So I made him get in there. He's my biggest lean advocate now. They have made tens of thousands of improvement videos and posted them on WhatsApp. They create all these chats throughout their entire organization, 7,000 employees, 40,000 subcontractors. They've trained over 150 people in Japan I've trained there. They went crazy. And all they're doing is showing before and after videos with their phones on WhatsApp. And the rest is history. Are they perfect? No, they're not perfect. But they're not slathering their concrete and their money all over their back parking lot anymore. Imagine that. Pretty cool. So here is the WhatsApp chat. Typical, it's called Kaizen Lean 1, Lean 2, Lean 3. They make all kinds of them. You can see it right there, uh, Kazakhstan Lean 2, Lean 3. You scroll through. I could go on my phone and scroll forever, and the videos would never stop. Never stop. Ever. It's incredible. This is a typical scenario on a job site. So I'm at this job site, and I'm with all the supervisors. We're walking around, and I asked them, when did they switch in their mind to do lean because they want to do it, not because management was telling them to do it. And Ruslan right here, who is the leader of this massive project, Green Quarters, you can see the size of it, it's just staggering. He pulls out his phone, show me, show me your phone, Ruslan. And he said, the improvements are happening so fast that he doesn't even have time. Это за вчерашнее. Я уже просмотрел. This is for yesterday. I watched all all of this. He doesn't even have time to look at all. This is for yesterday. 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 Вот. Сегодня уже не успеваю открыть и просматривать, потому что Биа Групп скидывает колоссальные улучшения. So the improvements are happening so fast they don't even have time to look at them. You ever seen anything like that before in your life? Could you get behind that? Would that be cool in your company? It's amazing. So awesome. It's the most powerful way to communicate and empower people. You think about that opening video in Numi. Let your people 
improve and watch productivity rocket. A couple weeks back, I went to the Global Lean Leadership Summit in St. Louis at Cambridge Manufacturing. Amazing event. Took four of my people with me. We had people from six countries there, and we toured Cambridge Manufacturing, and their company was the uh, showcase for this event to show how they had implemented successfully Lean, and it was incredible. And it brought tears to my eyes. I'm gonna have to work hard not to cry right now, but. I walked around and I took these videos of these people and I go, wow, this is incredible. It's extremely open-minded and it's, they're always pushing you forward to improve. The, there's no limits on the improvements. What about how much time it takes? They don't care that it takes time for you to make these improvements? No, you may, it may set you behind during your day, like, but next week and next month, you're gonna make up for it and then some. And I've seen that because when I first started doing lean, I was in training and we started with eight units a day and we went up to 10. And I'm like- And that's just in two months. Right, and I'm like, how, how am I supposed to do this if you would just let me work and stop talking about all this lean stuff. But now that I've made a few improvements, I'm faster and now we're doing more units and I'm getting them done faster and with less errors. Awesome, great job, Greg. Thank you. Could you handle a few people like that? How about this guy? I've been introduced to Lean before, but it was introduced to me as a tool, not necessarily a philosophy or a, a way of Philosophy. seeing everything. Right. And, uh, and I wasn't necessarily encouraged uh, to make changes where I was at before. And here, here they do? Here, very much so. Very so, much so are you doing this to please the management because you're brown nosing them, or are you doing it because you believe in it? No, sir. It makes my job easier. It makes my job easier. and. It's, what do you think of the leadership of this company? They're unique. And I, Why are they unique? They're unique in the sense of they care. They're humble enough to come out here and talk to me. I, I've never had that. I'll say that right now. They're humble enough to come and ask how I'm doing as a worker. Uh, At what level? Who would come out here and talk to you? Mark, our president. I, I see him twice a day probably. It's, and he knows your name? Absolutely. Why he knew my name before I could remember his. Why would he even the come first out week? Are you kidding me? I'm not kidding. He knew my name before I couldn't remember his, his name for the first three days. He just introduced himself as Mark. Because he is Mark. He's not Mr. President. The level of humility in this place is amazing. It's across the board. It's enough to bring a man to tears. It brings me to tears, to be honest with you. And uh, I want to do good because... They care. They're in, the, the environment here is just so encouraging and, and that's, I don't know how, how else I can put it. Is it just Mark that cares or is no, it everybody? Sir. No, it's everybody. It starts with a universal experience. Everybody, our, our staff cleans the bathroom alongside us. We clean the bathroom, they clean the bathroom. Alongside shirts the management. And, shirts and ties, yes. We'll get on the floor, scrub. Scrubbing toilets. This is how we operate here. We're all, we're on the same team. We're all on the same team. Mark, stand up. <laughs> the soul of lean. Meet Marvin. That gave us you. that time. You don't, you because don't, that lean improvement that we did. This, this is every right? day. I mean, it, it's not just we're just talking, we're living it. We used to weld this onto the floor housing. Right. And if it was welded wrong or something like that, that was trash. Yep. Now this is screwed. Yep. So if this is formed wrong, take the screws out, we do it. To, to be honest, um, that extra time we have at the end of the day, you're not as fatigued yep. because right. at the end of the day, you, you sit down, he makes the little chart out he shows over there at the end of the day. Nobody comes over and says, you should be working, you, you owe me an extra hour and left in the day, we're exactly. paying you for that. We sit down on that, nobody come over, you know, we paying you, none of that. Say, how about we try it this way? So, does it work for you? Go for it. But we got the okay from the top to do it. We don't have to get permission from our bosses unless it's a big dollar amount or it's gonna really affect production, but if it's something that you can do, do it. We use a, a million dollar machine to punch the hole bigger, and this is the goal of the, the right, shaft over here. Right. This, 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 okay. I, you do like 100, 200 at a and time. And now you use a dollar piece of wood and a piece of metal. 
take this, put it in there, put this over here. And we do it in here. As we need it. As you need it, just as in time, right here. As you need it. This hinge had to be, it was spot welded onto the lid, but then this side of the hinge had to be welded, MIG welded onto the can itself. It was very easy to get this thing spot welded on there crooked. Then when you went to go close the lid, it was the lid wrong. wouldn't close properly. So Marvin, as he likes to call himself, was a pit bull on this and just kept on our engineers and on our, our supervisors to make this easier. So now everything is riveted together. This has to be turned one way for an up, up blast and the other way for a down blast. Well, if you accidentally spot welded those things wrong, you had to throw those lids away. Now, take the screws off, turn it around. Total flexibility. Absolutely. I, I'm a welder by trade, so I got rid of welding. And they said that's <laughs> normally unheard of. To get my, my guys said thought I was nuts. You know, I said, God, you going to get yourself out of a job getting rid of the welding. No, they, they, I looked at the overall deal, how that affects everybody. Uh, the guys over here, the guys down there, even our guys out in the field that install these. If they run into a problem, something's not formed right or whatever, instead of throwing away the whole deal, you throw away that piece that's wrong and put a new piece so in. So you weren't thinking about yourself, you are thinking about the team. Every, everybody. It's a win-win situation all the way around. So what do you think's more valuable for you yeah, as a yeah. worker, to be a welder or to be a lean problem solver? A lean problem solver uh, because once you eliminate the problems that bug you and that's what we call things that bug you like that did it makes your life easier because instead of, say it took you 20 minutes to do something and you just eliminated 10 minutes off of that frees you up to, to do something else or train I can do this job I can do burn I can do him uh, accessories but you're versatile did you notice he never talked about money it makes your life better why did Sakichi Toyota do what he did to improve the quality of life for his mother. Why am I so passionate about lean? Because it improves the quality of life for people. The leadership team at Cambridge. 4,000 videos in two years. 4,000 videos in two years. Here's a word from him. Well, just look at everybody here. I mean, come on, Every, you know, to, to be in an environment like this, people are thriving. And it is so wonderful to go home every day when you see people that are talking, solving problems, engaged and, and, and happy. And when you see that health, it, it makes me really happy, but it just blows me away because you know they're going home with the same uh, step, the same energy level, not drained, not beat up. But, and if, if you go home with that energy, it's, a, it's amazing what you can do to give back to your family. Be better. Fathers, mothers, brothers, daughters, sons. You know organizational health when you feel it and when you're in the middle of it. And it's just a whole bunch of different things that are all coming together, a lot of small things that are coming together. But without it, it's hard to do anything well. With it, it's hard to do much wrong. And it feels right now like we're making great strides on organizational health and things are falling into place because of it. Eupetric connects basically organizational health with sustainable growth and says that it's the number one key uh, ingredient and uh, more important than strategy, more important than product or market. And uh, I believe that. I believe that the other leaders resonated with that. Uh, it really uh, matched the core of who Cambridge has been for 53 years and uh, a family-based business that uh, loves their people well. Jim Womack, thank you for starting this. Do you want it? Every person, everything, every day. Thank you very much.